We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh yeah. First episode of 2021. And just like that, just like the last episode of 2020, we have another epic guest. We also met today's guest at Pot Max. And the first thing he said was, I hope there are no lawyers in here because all I want to do is punch them in the throat. <laughs> Talk about an icebreaker, just saying. <laughs> Gotta say, that was freaking hilarious and amazing. But not too long after that, we were pen we were pen on paper taking notes on everything he was sharing. He mm. is a pioneer at leveraging media to build brands and successful businesses. How do we know that? His track record of buying and selling over 250 businesses. Speak that that track record speaks for itself. Just saying. Yeah. He's also the best-selling author of The Hero Factor and founder of the C-Suite Network, a community for C-level ex executives and entrepreneurs who want to scale and succeed fast. Fun facts, he was on Celebrity Apprentice with Donald Trump and he was the CMO of Kodak. I think I should have put, in instead of fun facts, epic facts epic in facts, there. Just but that's okay. Most importantly, he is a family man. Please welcome best-selling author, host, of the old business podcast mm. and someone that won't hesitate to punch you in the throat, Mr. Mr. Jeffrey Hetzler. <laughs> hey, I'll only punch you in the throat if you deserve it. Otherwise, no, I'm okay. I'm all right. It's all right. That's right. And by, so why, why didn't I get the memo? Why didn't I get the memo about matching? I would have matched. I would have matched. I would have had my mom. I would have had my mom lay out the same color T-shirt. I would have done that. <laughs> That's right. I know. That would have been great. That would have been great. I mean, but right now we're matching. We kind of the background. You know, you have the blue, the the blue side of things. We got the red side of things. There you go. Yeah. I'm just looking at the bus. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for being on the show with us. Wow, what an incredible honor is to have you here, especially after that event at PotMax. We were like mind blown with what you built over the years. To be honest, I had no idea who you were, even though you're, like, you're super loud at the contributions that, that you take into the world. So uh, I'm extremely really grateful that you're here <laughs> today. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be on the event. It was a lot of fun, a lot of good people, a lot of great content creators. You know, this is the name of the game now. I mean, content's king activations queen but but context the kingdom so it's not just about creating good content or great content uh because that's what you really have to do to stand out but also to be able to put it in the right place right so mm -hmm. it gets noticed by the people yeah. that you want to get noticed by that's the key right now that's yeah, right and absolutely your 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 i mean your background is impressive to more than 250 businesses you know bought and sold and you know cm of code like this amazing community that we're actually part of the c-suite you know we talked to jennifer we're part of it we're extremely honored to, to be there so you know how did that how did everything start jeffrey how, how did you start actually like in the in the business of publishing on on this you know journey to what you do now well, you know, it started way back before. I was a printer. I was a you know a printer from by in my earlier in my career. I was a lobbyist in government. I did a lot of things along those lines. But I realized the value of you know controlling the the story, being the story, right? I did that in public relations and a lot of different businesses. But then when I became at Kodak, I got the value of a you know pictures worth a thousand words, and so got the value of a great image. And then from a great image, I started looking at hey, what's it going to be like as we move into this digital age? You know, as days become weeks, weeks become months, months become years. I mean, the fact that we're going to be more and more digital, you got to have more and more content. Well, the key thing is, is for you to be able to create your own story, to be your own story, to be the brand. And by being the brand, when they when you sell yourself, you're selling the business. When you sell the business, you're selling yourself. And that's what people are looking to do. So it's really, truly, this shift is occurring for all of us right now where we've got to own the story. We've got to become the category and create that so that people mm. will find us. Because, you know, it used to be you, you could go on television and, you know, everybody would know who you are. But nobody, you know, who, who rushes home to watch a primetime show? <laughs> nobody. You know, yeah. uh, you watch it when you want to watch it and you watch it because your friends watch it. And the more your friends watch it, the more you'll watch it and the more other friends watch it. That's the name of the game. So it's about creating more and more content that people want to have. 
Wow. That's master class. I mean, th <laughs> just that clip we just I have to send to everybody. Be like, hey, yeah. here, this is why you should start publishing. You know, we Do have it. a question at the end that yeah. kind of kind of seems like that. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I thank you for you it. You know, I'm curious. I don't know if you're familiar with the attractive character term. Uh, when was it that you decide to become that attractive character? Was it during your CMO oh. as Kodak? Or was that a transition? Yeah. When I was the CMO of Kodak, it was really the beginning of this, you know, digital piece of you know being a brand. And Forbes did a front page story on me called the the uh, for uh, the uh, what would they call me the the celebrity CMO because I was everywhere. You know, I was a judge on Celebrity Apprentice for three years. I was very active. I was using TV. I was using what I call OPM, other people's yeah. money. You know, by getting content created and creating stories. You know, I I named the very first chief blogger ever. But that was never a term that was that existed. I, I named yeah. the very first chief listening officer in social media. That had never been invented. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to utilize the the brand of people because that was very much at the core of what Kodak was, and to go out and create you know a different story and tell the stories of Kodak because you know it was easy money, it was better money, and it was yeah. more believable because it was real. It wasn't being bought. You know, and yeah. as a result of that, I decided when I left Kodak, I was going to go out and start something and I was going to create a personality brand around myself. I was very clear about that because that's all I had. I didn't have anybody else. I looked around. It was just me. So yeah. I said, I'm going to create what I call a global business celebrity. And someone said once, well, what is that? And I said, whatever the hell we tell them that they, it is. And that's what it's going to be. And that's what we started out with. And then from that, you know. You know, I would show up at all these events and do all these things and, you know, be, become what somewhat of a celebrity. And of course, now here a million followers later, you know, we're, we're, we're monetizing that brand with a podcast, a TV show, four best selling books, you know, speaking on mm -hmm. stages when you could speak on stages. Now I'm speaking in squares, yeah. but, but nonetheless, <laughs> the same thing. Right. And then then yeah. with it, I said, OK, we can teach other people how to do this and we can create a you know, a network of, of executives and of people who want to do the same thing. And that's what we're doing yeah. with C-Suite Network, which led us to C-Suite, you know, C-Suite Network, C-Suite Book Club, C-Suite Radio, C-Suite TV, C-Suite, I mean, you name it. We have yeah. 120 different uh, entities. Yeah, ju you just described like the, the an amazing evolution, you know, from that decision of becoming the yeah. attractive character to, you know, a few years after, like, okay, what, you know, what that became, right? And you're helping hundreds of entrepreneurs, executives to do something similar. So when a lot of people st start publishing, especially when we started publishing, you know, we're, we're now episode 125. We, it, it's easy to say it, but we, we weren't there, right? Like we spent three years trying to decide if this was the thing that we needed to do, right? And But a lot of people struggle with that decision, not only to put themselves in, on camera, but to become that attractive character, right? So what is, what is your maybe like number one advice to that person that is like at the brink of becoming that attractive character, but they're still having some doubts on should they do that, right? Uh, to well, me, it's everybody, like they, don't compare yourself to Joe Rogan. Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself, you know, with Kim Kardashian or you know, don't don't do that because your chances of becoming famous and big are are minuscule. Let's be clear. This isn't a game about about eyeballs and ears. This is a game about hearts and minds. It's about building great, great, you know, connections with people and people who want to do business with you or people who are like you. And even if it's a small community, it's more, going to have more engagement than a large following with lots of people, you know, eyeballs and ears, you know, it's much better to build, you know, step by step by step. So what I tell people is do it the way you want to do it. It doesn't make it right or wrong, but it's doing it the way you want to do it. And therefore, it's already a success before it begins. And so from there, you'll start to attract those people who are like you and want to be with you and want to hear your message and, and read your story. And then if you do that, then the, then the next step is to add zeros. It's a real simple. And the more zeros you start to add, the more people you start to add, the more people that really like it. But find your group. And the other thing is yeah. you're going to let's be clear. You're going to make mistakes. Are you, are you kidding me? You know, uh, not all of us can look like this, you know, for TV, I'm, I'm scared, you know, no. my point is you're, you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. And that's OK. No one died. No one died. Make the changes. You'll figure it out as you go, because your first episode that you do won't be the same as the hundred and twenty fifth episode that you do. You just get, you get so much better as you go. But if you want to if you want to be a maestro, you got to learn to play a lot of bad notes. 
And yeah. and so to be the to be really good at it, you're going to make mistakes along the way, and that's okay. No, no one died. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love what you said. You know, kind of rephrasing here that pretty much your message attracts your tribe, right? And I think a lot of people need that. Those these days, and especially, is key to building a a sustainable business. At the end of the day, you need to have those people that keep coming back and they become repeated customers. And the best way is by you know, becoming that person that they know, like, and trust. And the only way to do that is by putting yourself in front of them multiple yeah. times. Also, look, you at a great look at a great coffee shop, Luis. I mean, a great coffee shop just doesn't start with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of patrons. It starts with one person who buys one cup of coffee. Yeah. And then they tell them how great it is. And then I tell that friend and that tell that friend and that tell. And then pretty soon they've got a, a coffee house full of people who love their coffee and what and line up every single day. That's how it occurs. And and that's what you have to do when, when you get started. Now, the good thing is you've got a medium where other people can find you. So, you know, go to where the, you know, there used to be an old comedian called Sam Kennison who used to talk about starving people in the desert. He said, you're starving in the desert. Move to where the food is, you know. And, and this is really what you have to do here, too. You have to go where the listeners are, where the followers are, where the people that want to listen to your message And that's why we're building like things like C-Suite Radio, you know, a podcast network for business podcasts, for luxury, for, you know, uh, you know, very affluent people who want to hear that message. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that kind of relates, I feel, to what you started doing from the beginning, which was the OPM, other people's money, right? You were putting yourself in platforms where they had the listeners, they had the audience. And I'm going to play a little devil's advocate here, but a lot of people that might be listening right now, They might be asking themselves, well, I don't have the leverage to put myself in other people's platforms, right? But at the very beginning, you also said you got to know where you're putting that content, put that content in front of people. So right. I'm curious, what is the balance maybe between creating that content and actually promoting it, right? How much time do you spend there uh, and, or what would be good first step for those people that cannot leverage other people's money at this point? Well, first, go give. Go give. The first thing you can probably do is go give. The more you give, the, the, the what you'll get. So, so for instance, you might not have the platform yet, but go go to others and congratulate them. Share their content. Be out there. Be a cheerleader for them. And you help yeah. that. They'll notice. I mean, if I were out there sh promoting your content before I had a show, you would notice that. If every week I was liking it and commenting on it and sharing it out and reposting it, you would notice that. And then when I happen to do a podcast and then I come to you and said, I did a podcast. Oh, yes, we remember you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for being such a great fan. Yes, let's have you on the show. Or it, maybe you're not right for my show. Here's another show that I know of and let mm -hmm. me recommend you to them. I mean, that's the kind of yeah. you know encouragement that you get in this community. That's what's really good. But you know, I've always told people, especially in this business, the more you give, the more you get. The more you share, the more you get out there and educate, motivate, inspire. The more that comes back to you tenfold. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Through Jeffrey, through your story, obviously, you've had your fair share of of challenges, right? Like from the very beginning, and you know, every when, day, when, brother, every day, every day. <laughs> so, is there? Um, And I'm I'm pretty sure, like it's gonna be a pretty easy answer for you, but is there a frame that you that you follow when you faced to this like with these challenges, right? Like when you first started with your TV shows with OPM, maybe like in Kodak, what happened to that company, right? Like right after, what you guys are leaving today with the C-suite network, right? Like what you guys are trying to do with like all these amazing uh, creators and and platforms. Is there a framework that you follow because you encounter challenges every single day? Well, of course, absolutely. I'm going to win. That's all. That's the challenge. That's the, the key thing I'm going to do. I don't care what I'm going to do. I'm going to win. Now, I might lose along the way. I might stumble along the way. I might make mistakes mm -hmm. along the way. And I'm going to do all those things. I'm going to fail oh. numerous, numerous times. There's just no doubt about it. Okay. I mean, if you haven't lied awake at night yeah. wondering how you're going to make payroll the next day, then you haven't lived as an entrepreneur. I'm just telling you, it's just the nature of the game. And so it, you're constantly selling, you're constantly raising money, you're constantly, you know, working and working and working. I mean, it's the best job you could have for 120 hours a week. I mean, you know, that's the that's the number name name of the game for most of us. So, so just you just have to understand if it was easy, everybody else would do it, and it's yeah. not. It's it's a difficult lifestyle, but it's one that's rewarding and challenging and fun. And and, you know, I I, I go to bed every single night hoping I'm going to hurry up and sleep so I can get to work the next day. Now, that's a pretty good thing. 
And yeah. so that's, you know, so I go at it with that attitude. I mean, so I look at, um, by the way, I start every morning off with what's the hardest thing I've got to get done today. And I get that done first. So mm. that's a, that's a great piece of advice for people because a lot of times we put that off to the end of the day and we never get to it. And it keeps going on that, on that list every other day. We keep, you know, for weeks working on it. No, I try to tackle the hardest thing that day, that morning, get it done with and be done. I also block a great deal of my time out in the morning for me. I'm going to set my schedule. I'm going to set where I want to go, what I need to get done. I'm not going to have others do it for me. So the first couple of hours is mine. And um, and I really spend a, I've learned that more in my latter half of the of my life than the first half, you know, uh, yeah. but you start to understand that time is inventory. It's money. Yeah, and absolutely. you want to you want to protect that as best you can. Yeah, that, that, that's impressive. You know, and I once heard that people get depressed and they get sad and lonely, usually because they don't have a plan. Right. Like the, the mm -hmm. easiest way to get out of that is to set up a plan. And I love the fact that you said, keep it simple. Just what is that one big task that you need to clear of your to do list? Because every single day that we see those tasks <laughs> move from the to-do list, from yeah. Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday, you just start sinking and sinking and sinking. Yeah, but so, let's be clear, man. I got a list. I got a list. I got a list I everywhere. Oh. <laughs> we, we all got lists, you know? So they Fun just keep adding. Once they cross up one, there comes five more things. It's like yeah. amazing to me. Fun Let's go super excited because you show paper. You know, we have this, this yeah. war between, you know, I'm technology a little bit. I'm Fonz is like a pen on paper, right? Like it, it's fine. Find your stuff. But at the end of the day, you're still crushing those goals and those uh, yeah. to-do items, right? Uh, Je Jeffrey, I'm pretty curious because you mentioned, right, like selling. Of course, mm -hmm. you need to mm -hmm. sell to grow a business. Yeah. And I feel something that has happened in today's culture of content creation, if you want to put it that way, is that people are maybe expecting to just give, give, give. And in return, they're going to get sales. Right. And I feel like they are maybe using that as an excuse to be proactively uh, selling pro in, a, in a proactive manner. Right. And I know that because we were in that point uh, at a moment we were like, if we put ourselves out there and just give value, the sales will happen. But it is not like that. You might get one yeah. or two sales, but you need to be proactive about it. Yeah. What is that fear that you find in people that that are not willing to be proactive about the sale? And did you ever counter, counter that? Right. Like how, how was it in your lifestyle? If you don't, if you, if you're not willing to sell, if you're not willing to ask for the sale, it's never going to come to you, period. I mean, it, you know, you might put, throw it out there and hope that you get lucky, but it, if you're not swinging at the ball, you never hit a home run. So you got to always be swinging. So you got to have, to, you got to turn that into some sales by showing the value. Now you could tell the story, show the values, but there should always be with it some kind of call to action, you know, some yeah. kind of give yeah. or help with that. And that give or help is around that sell. You don't have to go and be, oh, come buy from me, come buy from me. But when people have tried this, this has been the result as working right. with me or doing with this. So there's a different way you can tell that story. And you just have to be finesse enough about it to be able to give it in that manner. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's selling without selling. And that's what people really want. They want the genuineness of the content. They want the genuineness of the engagement and the interaction. And so yeah. from that, you should be able to get it. But don't you should never be afraid to sell. You should never be. I mean, like if you come to our C-suite network meetings, you can come as my guest the first time. You can come yeah, the second time. Third time, you should bring a hot dish. You know, you should bring <laughs> something to the meal, you know. And I'm very upfront with people about that because, you know, why should I do more for you than you're willing to do for yourself? And so, so we're, so you have to, you have to state what I call conditions of satisfaction that if I do this for you, will you do this for me? And then yeah. what are those? And can we work out those mutual conditions of satisfaction? And it's important for people to have those conversations. So there's no ambiguity about it. And I have no problem with that. Never have in terms of being able to state that with people, you know, because my, my time is valuable. I, I respect sure. your time. You know, and, and but but I, if we started off a conversation where you and I were beginning the conversation for both of you, I'd say, what? How can I help you? That'd be my first question to anyone that I talk to. I, I start every question well, how can I help you? Yeah, thank that's, you. That's impressive. Um, I'm I'm curious because you've bought and sold over 250 businesses. What is the difference between selling something at a lower ticket and those big businesses, right? Besides uh, the, the obvious point of 
the timeline that it must take for all the legal work to mm -hmm. to buy and sell a business. But is there a mindset level of things or you approach it the same exact way? I, I approach it the exact same way. So whether you're a business in Main Street in Sioux Falls, South Dakota or on Wall Street, there's no difference between the business. It's just zeros. You know, it's the same kinds of people, same kinds of things. Someone who has something to sell, someone wants to buy something or someone doesn't know they need it yet. So, you know, in when I it always gets down to certain kinds of things in selling. It gets down to the connection that you make with the buyer in terms of trust, right? Yeah. And then it gets down in terms of the value of the transaction and then the ability to be able to transact. And it's really that simple. And we, you know, I'm working on a multi-billion dollar thing right now. Um, it's a $21 billion transaction. Wow. And in that transaction that I'm working through, it's simple little personal things and communication. And this person heard this. No, that's not the case. Let's make sure we make that clear. It's a misunderstanding. No, you, you, uh, let, me, let me educate you on, on international banking and the transfer of funds and how that works and how that works with our bank and how we pull it into an escrow account, how we save that until we transfer the title. I mean, let's work through those issues, but it's all the same things. And, and it's no different than if I were to walk into a store and I'd have to negotiate getting my car fixed or this done or this done. Exact same things have to occur. You yeah. know, in a more retail environment, it's a little bit more spelled out than if it were more of a consultative sale or those kinds of things. But it's always the same. It's yeah. always the same. I, yeah. I, I feel very excited right now because, you know, we've we've had a look through you on the other side. It's like, OK, what happens, you know, as you move up that ladder? right? And you're giving us a very encouraging answer because a lot of entrepreneurs are today publishing, creating value, building trust. Right. And that these are the ingredients that we need to move forward with our businesses, with our impact, with the things that, that we can contribute. With your life. With exactly. your life. Exactly. You, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you operate your business in the same values that you operate your life, what a great thing that would be. Incredible. Then then we know when I see you, when I see, you know, you talk to me, whether you're, you're living next door to me or we're transacting across the seas, it's the same thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and so you can get that sense of value, that sense of, of, sense of, of who I am and what I am. Hopefully you get that in business and you'll get that in my personal life, right? And, and to me, they should be the same. And we should, for a long time, we put these facades up that, that it was one like, it was one lay, way this way and another way like this. Well, social media is breaking down all those barriers for us, which mm. is awesome. And, and we're seeing what the real things are. And, you know, this, all this crap of people taking pictures of their food and th this or that, you know, and their influencers. And that's all bullshit, you know, because, yeah, you know, I've seen influencers that had 2 million followers and couldn't sell a T-shirt. So, you know. <laughs> It's yeah. but if you're genuine and you're real and you believe in the products and you like the things, you know, I I never say anything bad about products. I don't think say anything bad about companies because you know every company has a bad day. Now there are some companies that are real assets. They're just not, not they're poor companies. We know who they are. But by and large, I talk about brands and things that I like and enjoy and 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 use or drink or eat. I love those things. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, I think one of the biggest values on, on publishing too is that you, you can get to connect with those people, with the things that you like, things like indoctrination process, right? You build trust. And and we've talked we have actually some some clients that have amazing platforms in the real estate, in the in the home care industry where they're indoctrinating these people, uh, their clients and they're, they're now they have repeat those people coming back to them, referring them and they just translate into business, right? Which is incredible. But now I, I want to dive into a little bit into your the C-suite part of things. Like what is sure. – the podcast on its own is a platform that allows us to connect with wonderful people like you, for example, right? All the amazing guests that we've had on the show, some of them were like – a year ago, we're like impossible to connect with these with these guys or girls because they're at a different level. But the platform of the podcast allows us, or the live show allows us to do this. Now you guys are taking it to a whole new level, right? So how do you what's your perception on owning your own platform? What's your perception on owning your own, you know, publishing with at, at the level that you guys are doing it, you know, with more than 400 uh, podcasters, content creators, TV shows, radio stations, why go there? Well, for us, it's about c controlling the message and then servicing a, a, a wide variety or a trusted network. In fact, that's what the C-suite network is. So when you look at the C-suite network, we're very much like a giant sequoia tree. 
And underneath this sequoia tree, if you've ever walked into Redwood Forest, you, you walk in and there's this giant canopy and underneath this is this lush ecosystem where our goal is to become that lush ecosystem, that marketplace for people to be to do it. So think of us like the B2B for Amazon. And that's indeed what we're trying to do. So we're trying to build a community of, yeah. of, of like-minded individuals who want to do business, who want to trust one another, who are worried about, you know, is that LinkedIn profile real? Is this real? Is that website this? Whatever. So we can come together and trust one another. Yeah. The second thing is then the content itself. How can you trust the content? And so to be a platform for that, then that's trusted content because we check it off and say, this is one of us, right? The yeah. next thing, then the convening, the meetings to be able to provide the education, the motivation, the inspiration. And third, or excuse me, fourth is then the concierge or services. So for us, it's about that marketplace and community that we want to build. Yeah. And so media is how we do that. Content is how we do that because yeah. without the content, then we, we have no way of being able to tell the story. And so by bringing people together, putting them under the, the canopy, you know, of the C-suite sequoia tree, then we're able to have this wonderful ecosystem that we're able to conduct business in. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how did that idea came to your mind? Like, did you were you modeling from something that you saw in a different industry? Or one day you were like, you know what, I want to bring all these people together. I'm very curious. It was more, it was more like I wanted to bring all these people together and then we started to form formulate what would work and how it would work. Although I looked at, I mean, we're, 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 we're some of the best platforms out there today that have that Sequoia effect. Yeah. Well, it's Facebook, it's LinkedIn, it's Salesforce, you know, it's Amazon where they built this entire ecosystem where everybody can play in a very yeah. safe environment. And they build businesses upon it. Well, we're going to do the same thing. So here is this wonderful network. You come, you join, you be, you, you, you know, inject your own DNA into it and us into you. So together we're all, you know, we're all working together. We're all giving. And the more we all give, well, look, well, now we can tell our story through podcasting, through TV, through books, through, uh, you know, in the meetings, uh, presenting in meetings, being a part of yeah. meetings, you know, all of that uh, becomes. Yeah. And then, and of course we have lots of peer to peer councils that you can join. Absolutely. That that's amazing. I, one of our biggest lessons for 2020 was environment. For us, we were doing everything alone for like four years and we weren't moving anywhere. We were just stuck in the same place, not growing as a business or personally either. And the moment we joined a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, it changed for us. Yeah, everything and then go find more. Growing. Go find more. They're not just one. There's many. Exactly. And, and Absolutely. That's the key. I mean, I look, I belong to lots of different groups because of that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mostly belong to the C-Suite Network, but I, I belong to many others and we're we're starting. I mean, we have our Hero Club. We have our CMO Council. We have our Women's Leadership Group. We, we have a Manufacturing Council. We have I get I mean, I can keep going. <laughs> well, we'll put the list, you know, we'll, we'll ask around. We'll put the yeah. list right below. People can't, can't join yeah. there. And, and, and that was my that's why I wanted to to come is, you know, like for those that are listening, I definitely encourage them to check out C-Suite Network because it's a huge community of like minded entrepreneurs that you don't even know who yeah. you can meet there that can help you take your business to the next level. Yeah, I mean, next to you in the square. I mean, if you come on a Friday night or you come to our digital discussion this weekend, I, I've got the CEO of Fast Signs, the CEO of the IFA, the International Franchising Association. I have the CEO of Crunch Fitness on uh, this week. That's who I have and I'll be interviewing. It's and then you get to interact and get into a room with them and ask them any question you want. And then on Fridays, we have a celebration event, which is like a cocktail party. You know, like when on Fridays you used to drive home and before you went home, you stopped at the bar to meet a bunch of friends and you might do some high fives or pat in the back, or maybe you need a big hug because you had a real shitty week, whatever. You know, <laughs> that, that group well, gets yeah. together and you don't know who you're sitting next to in the square. This the yeah. square next to you might this this guy might be running a, a hundred billion dollar business. This one might be a yeah. brand new startup. This one might be the former lieutenant governor of the state of you know uh, uh, of Illinois. I mean, you never know who's in the squares next to you. It's awesome. Yeah. Th that is so crazy. It's that just reminded me of <laughs> the moment when we joined our first community. <laughs> right before that, we were at this live event, and the guy on stage had said. Put on paper your goal for the next year. And I think we put something like 
Three million dollars. No, it was it was three three hundred grand. Oh, it was three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. And the guy sitting right next to us, he turned around and he looked at us and he's like, "Why so low? Aim higher." <laughs> and we looked at his paper and it says something like thirty million dollars. <laughs> and we started talking. Turns out he had a real estate business that was making, you know, like I think it was like ten, fifteen million dollars. And we're like, "Wow." That is crazy that we have the opportunity of sitting right next to these people. And I feel now also digitally, it's, it's incre- even, yeah. better even better because, you know, yeah. the, the accessibility is yeah. is faster. You don't have to actually travel. So that is a big plus. And I'm curious because you are a very self-driven person, I can tell. But the environment plays a big role in, in your upbringing, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, well, I mean, my fa- my father was in the military. My mother was a bookkeeper, you know, became a real estate agent. So, you know, we didn't live a very rich environment. I just always yeah. knew I didn't want to have, I always wanted more than what I had when I was growing up. And I didn't want to, you know, we shopped at Sears. We did those things, all the great things that, you know, made up my life great. But, you know, I always wanted more and I wanted to be able to, you know, drive my own personal conditions of satisfaction, which was to build wealth for my family you know, to be able to have what I wanted to have and my family to have what it wants to have as we move forward into the future. Second, I wanted to do something that was exciting and new and I would learn from. And third, I wanted to have fun. Those were my three driving factors. So those were the things that drove me. That's amazing. Yeah, I I, I think though, I mean, the fact that you know exactly what those are, you know, so many people are trying to find those. For us, it, I, I think we had a, a solid, you know, knowledge on that. But then as soon as we started publishing, this became our, our crack. We were like, man, like we we would love to be, you know, in front of this camera, connecting with people every single day, right? And my wife is like, you should go out and make some friends in the real world. I'm like, I am, I am. It's just <laughs> I, I promise you, I promise you. And a better quality too, for sure. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. But you, you know, let me, let me add though, guys, you, you know, the, the first goals though were to eat, right? Yeah. First goals were to pay my bills. First goals was to, you know, not be in debt to people. I mean, let's mm-hmm. be, you know, and then then you start realizing like the first time you wrote your goals, 300,000, you were thinking, oh my God, if I could just hit 300,000, what would that be like? What would that be? And then you realize, oh, I can put a zero or two on there, you know? And the more zeros you start to add, you start realizing it's not that, it's not that hard to conceive. You know, it's just, a, it yeah. becomes a numbers game. It becomes doing what you do really well and then doing more of it. And so how do you do that? Well, you're going to have to put the hours in. You're going to have to leverage. You're going to have to meet more people. You're going to have to use OPM. You're going to have. But, you know, at the core of that right now for everybody is content, content, content. If you've got you don't understand that, then you you should stop right now and just get out. Hmm. I love it. That, yeah. Boom. This is the perfect message right here for John. the content is profit. I John. really, really appreciate it. And I love how you've tied, you know, the content with the sales as well, because it's, it's important. People, I feel like. A lot of people don't understand that side that is like you need to make offers and ask like that people for, for that value, right? But always leading with value. How can I help you, right? That the question that you always ask people uh, the very first time that you talk to them. So yeah. thank you so much. And I'm, I think we're, we're getting closer here to the end, but I want to talk a little bit about the hero factor because I know you're very big into that and you were talking about values, right? Personal values, right. especially mm-hmm. uh, they translate into values of the company and now social media is making that very transparent for everybody. How does that apply? Like what is exactly the hero factor and how can people, you know, put that into their business? So we found that companies that operated with values gross more dollars than any other company in their industry, make more money than anyone in their industry, have employees who are happier, have customers who are more engaged, suppliers who want to do business with them, and and the community loves them because they're doing the right things for the right reason. So the hero factor is the one thing that sets everyone apart, and that says their business will based on values, that they will put people above profits. Okay. And that is the core of a hero business. And that's what we, we strive for. So it's a group that we have inside of our community that's very active. And that was started with about 20 members now into the hundreds and hundreds of members. And wow. we're looking for more entrepreneurs who want to lead with value. It's yeah. a group that gets together every couple of weeks and talks about how to lead with values, how to lead their company based on values. Who, who do things for the right reasons. And we talk about diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And we talk about, uh, you know, what's good profits and bad profits and what are good environmental practices and bad environmental practices. And so it's about a well-balanced uh, business and okay. doing it for the right reason. That's it. Real awesome. simple. 
Oh, and uh, go go get the book. Go get in the community. We're gonna leave all the links right here. All you mm -hmm. gotta do is like scroll down just a tiny bit and just tap it. Uh, Jeffrey, two quick questions to end this with a bang or with a golden boulder, like like we said. Right. Question number one is, what is your no number one action point for somebody that's starting their business? You know, they're starting their publishing journey. What is the thing that they need to do to continue that momentum? Don't wait for perfect. Don't mm -hmm. wait for perfect. You'll never be perfect ever. Mm -hmm. Just go. Just go. You're going to make mistakes, but if you wait for perfect, you know, but done is better than perfect. But once done, strive for perfect. Absolutely. I, I think this keeps coming up in this uh, in these questions. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jeffrey, for uh, making the point for us. Uh, you know, we waited three years, guys. Don't wait three years. Go ahead and do it. Uh, go. Yeah. Yeah. What are you waiting on? I mean, that, yeah. I mean, what? Why? Why? You wait <laughs> three years not to give good stuff, not to get better, not to not I to touch know. more people. I mean, come on. Yeah, don't don't Absolutely. don't do the what Luis and Fonzie did. Uh, listen yeah. to Jeffrey, please. Now, last question, and probably my favorite one, Jeffrey. Where will you be if you did not publish? Oh, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be. I don't want to. I'd be a <laughs> failure. I mean, I no one would know about what we were doing and how we were doing it. Are you kidding me? I'd be, I would be in podcast purgatory. I would be in blog purgatory. I would be, you know what I mean? No one would know. I would just be one of many businesses out there flandering, trying to survive right now. And that, now this is about driving and thriving. And so content allows me to drive and thrive. That's Powerful. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. The, yeah. Wait, yeah. it's a golden yeah. boulder moment right oh, here. Oh, that's a golden buzzer. Oh, oh, yeah. I like that. that. That yes. is a golden boulder. Where's the confetti? Boulder, guys. Where's the confetti? Where's the confetti? <laughs> you know, we can celebrate this like that. Uh, dude, Jeffrey, what an incredible honor. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing your time. Well, I'm sure we'll let's be... do it again. Let's I'm, do it I'm again. game. Let's do it again. You just Sounds let me fun. know. I'll be here. Part two. Absolutely. And then uh, C-Suite has the rights for this interview. So you guys can broadcast in all the TV channels <laughs> and then we can show up together. Now, Jeffrey, where can we find you? Where can people connect oh. with you with the company, with C-Suite? How can they? Yeah, anything up? with C-Suite. If you look up anything with C-Suite, C-Suite Network, C-Suite Radio, C-Suite Book Club, C-Suite TV, C-Suite Supplies, C-Suite Loans, C-Suite, you name it, you can find it. Or Hazlet, H-A-Y-Z-L-E-T-T. That's awesome. it. We're gonna leave the 300 links right below. So just choose, <laughs> just choose yeah. one and go there. It will be fine. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at this bros go. That is right. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you did because Jeffrey was amazing, please don't forget to share it and and leave a five star review. Thank you. Thank you guys.